My Barton's and Oliver turret lathe uses collets that are this big, and it has a face plate on the spindle that uh, compresses the ends as you push material in. It squeezes and holds everything in place. When I got the lathe, it came with these smaller collets and another face plate that actually fit these collets. But as you can see, they're shorter, and it came with a spacer too. So I was able to uh, use these uh, smaller collets, even though the machine's not made for it. So I've got these big ones, I've got these medium ones, and they only go up to, well, they only go down to a certain size. But I found these little guys, a whole box of them. So now I have to make something to adapt a machine that's made to run this huge one with this face plate with this tiny one. So that's going to be today's project. I got to make a spacer that goes on the back to make it the same diameter and to push it out to the same length. And I've also got to make a face plate. So here's the uh, piece here, aluminum. And I'm just, I just hogged out a bunch of excess material there. The reason I'm using aluminum is because I've got a ton of it laying around, basically tripping over the stuff. And I don't have much steel. And I don't even know if this is going to work. So I thought it would be better to use the stuff I have laying around. And if it does work, then uh, maybe I'll make one out of steel. So that center hole there has to match the angle of the collet. So as it's pushed in, it compresses that tip and holds the material. These are all mounting holes here. I wasn't thinking when I made the thing. The spindle's got, I don't know, 12 holes in her and then another 12 on the outer ring. But the faceplate that I have and the three jaw chuck is only held on with three bolts. So I, I could have got away with just making three holes here. So if I make another one, that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see here, I, I hit the, uh, the end of my travel. I must have just been over it because it, uh, it kicked it over. Instead of uh, instead of going into uh, a limit switch, it's weird. I've never had to do that before. But I was trying to get it as big as I could so that I didn't get into those mounting holes, and I finally got it there, just inside of the travel limit. Cut a few flats on each of these two ends so that I could have a surface to clamp it to when I flipped it over to countersink the mounting holes. Here you can see mounted to the lathe itself. I uh, lopped those ends off with a saw just to save myself a little bit of work. I want to trim this edge up. So with that, that piece is pretty much done. This here a piece of stock I had left over from another project. This will be for the spacer. It uh, was very fortunate it just happened to be really close to what I needed. So I'm glad I held on to it. So 
I wanted the fit on that collet to be snug but not tight. So I had to walk up on it and get the uh, get the feel I wanted. After I cut it off of uh, the rest of that material, put it in here upside down to get the back side, just using the fly cutter to get rid of most of that material. So this here is actually a, it's supposed to be a taper. I don't know, maybe my coolant shut off or maybe I was running it too fast or something, but it was really gummy. It didn't turn out the way I wanted um, it was I was able to clean it up with a sander, but um, it was just more work than I wanted it to be. Kind of disappointing, but it didn't really do anything except guide the material into the collet as you push it in. So it ended up being fine. But I don't know if you can uh, if you can see it here. Yeah, see how bad that looks? I don't know what happened, but that was a bummer. Anyway, I did get it cleaned up, so it, it's fine. So here it is, getting mounted to the lathe for the test run. I think that's a one-inch collet that I have in there. So as you can see, as the uh, as the collet closes and opens, it grips and releases the material, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So I'm gonna give it a test run, give it a try, make sure it actually holds tight to the material. If I use it enough and it feels worth it, I'll probably go ahead and make one out of steel without all these holes. And uh, oh, I almost forgot. Here's a uh, here's a shot of the box of collets that I got. So I've got a larger array of work holding capabilities now. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.